This guy, so everyone is good. So eight Leeds United Loney players have come back to the club for pre-season and will be looking to play for Leeds United in the Championship next year. In this video, I've gone through each one of them with kind of a little discussion on each player, whether we think, or whether I think they are good enough to play for Leeds United, whether I think they will if they suit a fact system, I'm giving them a rating out of 10, 10 being the highest, on how much I think they could impact the team this season. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get into it. And we're starting off with a strong one here, a big one. Charlie Creswell, who has recently just won the European Championships with England, which, by the way, was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, he did play against Germany in that play 90 minutes. Played quite well. Charlie Creswell was on loan at Millwall last year. He got 20 appearances, five goals and one assist. Five goals at centre-back is pretty decent. He had a mix, mixed bag. Uh, he started off okay, had a bit of a, a lull, got dropped a little bit, didn't play as much. You know, kind kind of made a lot of mistakes in that thing, but then the last third of the season, from and this is from what I've watched and from what I've been told, he was very very good, very good there. Really found after that World Cup break, bomb. And he said he he felt he went a boy and left a man, which is very important. Obviously, had the eye socket injury, so he missed the, the final bit of the season, but ended the 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 loan and the second half the loan. I guess was very good for Charlie Creswell. That's what I like to see. That's what gives me promise of the potential we know he has. And it's good experience in the championship. Aside that we're battling for promotion as well. Just 20 years old. Like that is so... He's still just 20 years old. I give him 7 out of 10. And I would have given him higher. But my only worry is... And it's not my opinion. This is just the facts of it. There's a lot of centre-back options. And if we believe in reports, we are looking to bring in another centre-back. Also, another worry of mine it, it is the person, personnel Fark likes in his defence. One of them will have to be quick or fairly quick. If that person is, is Strauch or, or, or Phillips or Cooper or Vorba, they're not quick. Charlie Creswell is not quick. So my worry is if all those centre-backs are at the club, finding two out of there who fit both kind of sectors... Your play starting Voba, for example. Can you really start Charlie Creswell? Is that quick enough? Potentially not. But personally, I really like Charlie Creswell. I think he's the future of the club. I think he's going to be a phenomenal talent. I think he's close to being excellent in this league. I think, again, the end of the season would massively helped. But the reason I put seven, not eight, and nine is based on that competition and the attributes needed for a centre back in a FARC system. But if he trains well and he plays well and proves to FARC that he's the man, he'll play. Simple as that. So that's the first one I've got. Charlie Creswell at 7 out of 10. Second I've got here is, is Ian Perveda. Now, I've gone 3 out of 10. Played in the Championship last season for Blackpool. 24 appearances, 2 goals, 1 assist. Not massively getting involved in the goals. From what I've been told, you know, and, and from what's obvious, like clearly, you look where he's been. He's been at Chelsea, Arsenal, Barcelona, Brentford, Man City, then came to Leeds. He's got clear talent. Problem with Perveda is the consistency, and from what I've been told, and this is just what everyone's saying, is his attitude. He's had attitude issues. I remember Bielsa speaking about Perveda and saying basically in an interview, "It's up to him. He's got the talent. It's up to him." For me, that that says a lot. Um, I hope it's not something. I thought it is blown out of portion, but from looking at his career and the way he's moved on and moved on, the clear talent there. But it's it's the other side of the game which just isn't there. So I I genuinely don't think Fark will accept any of that. He might turn that around, but I highly doubt. We're at twenty three now. You, that's the time you you kind of need to change. Yeah, clear talent, but no, not for me. Uh, three out of ten. Next one, Jamie Shackleton. Now, just clarify, the rating is based on how much I think they will have an impact or how much I think they could have an impact this season. It's not based on how much I'm rating them out of 10, just to clarify that. Shackleton, played for Millwall last year. 36 appearances, which is quite a lot. No goals, no assists. Was fairly versatile for them, played a lot of positions. Didn't start a lot of those games, came off the bench. Gary Rowett said he's good at what he does. You know, when he comes on, he, he has an impact, he does well. We just can't settle in a position. And, and that, so far in his career, has been that hurdle. To really establish himself in a position at a club. He struggled. Clearly a, a very good guy, good person, good to be around, great professional, you know, good runner, fairly, fairly competent footballer, obviously, he's played in the Premier League. But I think just now at 23, I think he just needs to find a home where 
And he's really suited and it'd be good for him because he deserves it and clearly got talent there. And he's found a game where he starts every game. You know, he's, he's a real part of that squad. The, lead, the reason I put it five is quite high, I guess. It's just purely based on, you know, the fact that, you know, he's a competent squad player. But I don't think he'll stay. I, I've got a feeling he'll either leave on loan or, or get, get sold because I think he's looking for first-team football. And I just don't think that can be guaranteed at Leeds United. So good luck to him. But, um, yeah, Jamie Shackleton. Leo Hielder. Now, this is quite an interesting one because, again, a, a guy we brought in who has quite a lot of, I guess there was quite a lot of hype around around his potential in the future from, from the Celtic side. But, again, went on loan at Rotherham in January last season. So, obviously, that's why the appearances are so low. Did play a lot for them, played a lot of games, but then, but then kind of kind of didn't settle at times, kind of was on the bench, didn't play in a few squads. There's no clear signs of to why that is. Potential injury, I'm not sure. It's, it's a difficult one, I guess, but for me, a player who I think at 19, which is still really young, he's got two options now. I think he can stay at Leeds United, develop there for a year or two, really find his game, you know, in a, in a winning side, be part of that squad, because I think he could be a good squad player currently for Leeds United. Obviously not starting, unless, you know, he turns up to trade in a different manner and absolutely excels, obviously. But right now, from what we know, I think he'd be a good backup, a good squad option in there, potentially behind behind a left back. I don't, I don't mind that at all. Decent learning experience last year at Rotherham. I quite like his attributes. I think he's got decent potential. Just whether he can stay fit and consistent, that, that's the worry for him. So I put it a 6 out of 10. I think Fart would like him around. It's whether he wants to stay around, I guess. But yeah, for me, as it stands, he's not a star. He's definitely a squad player. Um, but you never know what happens per season. But yeah, we need we need a left back that is clear and obvious. So I think he'd be a good backup option at 19 years old for that from basic you know, his experience. And the next one, an interesting one again, Joe Gelhart. The reason I put eight. And this is based on impact on the team, not necessarily 100% starter. The thing about Joe Gelhart is, and I look at his attributes, I'm talking about pure attributes. Before we talk about his season at Sunderland, look at pure attributes here. In a FARC system, that small, combative, stocky striker works in, to an extent. You know, he's a decent presser, he will press hard. Whether he can do that for 90 minutes is a different option, but that's what we talk about, you know, being an impact on the team. He, he technically is really good, Joe Gelhart. He's got decent ball control. He can progress a ball. I do think he gets lost too much, and that was happened at Sunderland. I watched quite a fair few times at Sunderland. They're on Sky Sports a lot. But I think the point of him there was to play over front two, I believe, but their main striker got injured, so he had to play up there by himself, and he just looks lost. Um, 18 appearances, three goals, three assists. Did play a lot of football. I don't think the system they played, based on what happened, was suited to him at all. I was watching it, and I was like, this is not his style. I think in a FARC system, Joffy can be effective. I think his attributes still there. We forget about potential of players. They don't lose it. They just can't, they just they don't lose it forever. They just lose it temporarily. They have to refind it. Now, the interesting for Joffy, again, is his expectations or what FARC believes he can do. At 21 years old, he has got that Sunderland experience, you know, playing playing high up in the championship. It's a good experience, but it went okay, not great. But 8 out of 10, because, again, impact and thinking about a FARC system, I can see a way in which Joffy fits. Whether that's a start or not will depend on on how he turns up this season. And he looks sharp. He looks good pre-season. He looks like he's lost a lot of weight or trim. Not a lot of weight. It was never big, was it? You know, we're always weird about that. But he slimmed down a little bit, maybe, maybe a bit more fit. And at 21 now, he might be looking at this as a season where, right, I really have to bury myself in this squad. So Joffy's the type of player for me who could have a breakout. I said that at the start of last season, but again, there was other options, wasn't there? It, it was all a mess. And under Fark in the championship, I can see Joffy being an impact. We're talking about we need goals under Fark. We do need goals. We need a lot of them. Um, and I still th think he can get you 10 goals in the championship an impact if he's played in the right systems. I think his, his finishing is decent. Don't get me wrong. He's got to be in the right positions. He needs support around him. He's that type of player. But I really like Joffy and that won't change. And I, I do think he could have a big impact in this squad, whether it's starting or coming off the bench. 
or starting certain games to adapt to opponents. I'm not sure, but I do think it could have a big impact from from uh, Joffy this year, genuinely. Um, I like his mentality, and from what I've seen, he looks ready. So let's hope he can continue with that. But yeah, Joffy, I give an 8 out of 10 in terms of impact, and I think he can have a big one this year. Pelder Costa, what do we need to say about this? Went on loan last year, 18 appearances, 3 goals, 1 assist, 2 out of 10. I'd... I don't, I don't think it could be lower than that. I just put two because he was at training. So I guess that's a two. That's impact somewhere. But yeah, let's move on. 29 years old, held a cost. I imagine he's going to leave fairly quickly. I'd be extremely shocked if he if he stayed longer than whatever. Yeah, no for me. Two out of 10. Good luck to him. Dan James. This is an interesting one. I keep saying that. I still was at Leeds United. Struggled a bit. Played massively out of position for so long under Leeds United. He was absolutely done by the coaches or the situation we're in. Never a striker. He's a winger. He's an out and out winger. And and at Fulham last year went along twenty four appearances, two goals, one assist. Not ideal, but twenty five years old is at a good age. And that we're forgetting. Everyone's forgetting, or a lot of people are forgetting. With Dan James, he was phenomenal in the Championship, and we wanted to sign him, and we almost did. Then he went to Man United. There's a reason. He was very, very good that year. He tore defences apart. He scored goals. He got assists. We can rekindle that player. You've got... For me, For me, what I think about is Daniel James, if he was going to any other championship club, he'd go to a top six championship club. I don't really think that. I think he was at a Fulham player and they were looking to sell him. I think he'd go to a top six championship club. I think he's a really good asset to have. Whether he starts, that'll depend on, for me, the other wingers, if they stay or go. But I put eight because whether he starts or not, the impact this guy can have, and I've said that time after time, speed is a thing, of course, you have to nurture it, but it's professional footballer. You you do not, categorically do not be a professional footballer just being quick. I cannot stress that enough. It's a lot harder than that to become a championship or Premier League footballer by being quick. His clear ability, clear talent, which he showed in the Premier League, he showed that. He's just not technically the best player in the world. He's not great technically, but he can get in really dangerous positions. He's really quick. He can be direct when his confidence is there. I think if Fart can really find that confidence in him and he does get game time, I think he can be great for Leeds United. I'm thinking the speed of him and Rutter on the wing, or if we keep Nonto, obviously, or Somerville, but I'm, I'm imagining we're losing them. Imagine him and Rutter on the wings for me is just dangerous. So yeah, for me, Dan James is 100%. I think we'll keep him. I think he can have a big impact on the game. 8 out of 10. And the only reason it's not 9, I think it could be 9. The only reason it's not 9 is because we have about 30 wingers at the moment. So he's probably lower in the pecking order. But if they go, he's the man for me. Last two now. And, and, and Lewis Bay, interesting. When I look, I've look, i looked at his, his things on th online. He made 28 appearances for Oxford. Uh, one goal, three assists. But they were, they were quite spread out he didn't have a massive period where he played a lot of games i think from what i can gather he did have a few fair injuries little injuries and that's that's the thing isn't it that's a frustrating thing but from when he played the the, the response i've kind of seen the bits online is that he was good and he's a clear talented footballer and obviously i agree i think lewis bay is is a really talented really good technical ball playing midfielder can run with the ball can drive with it can create you know forward momentum he is a really good footballer he's still 20 years old which is very young the reason i put five out of ten again it is based on the competition look if we keep adams that's one you know if who else is there let me think darko jb in there for me him and archie gray might be above bait for now maybe not but potentially if you're bringing in one or two, which we're talking about, again, you're bringing in the likes of well, Hamer or, or, or Masengo. These type of players will all be above him. There's a lot, though, There will be a lot of competition in that area for me. So I think he's going to struggle to really stand out to be a starting impact player. Maybe he wants to play football, so maybe he will want another loan. Maybe a lower-end championship side, one that's not obviously going to, we believe, is not going to battle for playoffs because we don't want that. So I put five in that reason, but what I will say about Lewis Bate, this could be the biggest hit. I think the impact he could have if he finds everything, he finds his form, he, his mentality switches to where he, he's ready and he wants to play for Leeds United and he's at that point now where he's ready to push on in his career. 
that could be eight, nine. But from what we know right now, it is a five, but don't sleep on Lewis Bate. Potentially, there's potential there, it really is. Um, I like him a lot, but yeah, five for now. I think it'd be difficult for now as it stands. So five out of ten. Last but certainly not least, Cody Drame. Now, last season, Cody Drame was at Luton Town since January, didn't play for Leeds in the first half of the season. 16 appearances, played basically every game for Luton Town, zero goals, two assists. Reason, so, so, there is pros and cons to Cody Drame. 21 years old, still very young, playing every game for a promotion side that got promoted to the Premier League is very, very good. And I put 9 out of 10 because I believe he will have a big impact. Let me just say that before I go into the, the other side. A big impact on Leeds United. I really like him. I think he's got really good attitude. I think he's got really good potential. I think he's got really good drive and passion for his career. And I think Fark will be able to adapt him into his system. The, the worries I have for Cody Drame is the fact that all these managers didn't necessarily play him in the Premier League. And there was more than one. There was three or four. That's... There's obviously reasons for that. And I'm saying they didn't play him over Luke Ayling. That's what I'm saying here. Now, now you're in the championship, that's totally different, different kettle of fish, right? Obviously. My, my, old, my other worry is this. 16 appearances, zero goals to assists. He was also the most dribble pass fullback in the championship in his period there, which isn't great. Especially in the FARC system where the, the fullbacks need to be able to defend as well as go forward. That is important to them. However, now, I, I'm, I, what I want to say is this. For me personally, I want Cody Drame to start. I'm just trying to be around, talk about everything here. Let's talk about Luke Ayling real quick. If you have the Luke Ayling, so say they're both at training, right? They're both training really well. They're both, doing, they're both competing for that place. And the Luke Ayling is outperforming Cody Drame at training, right? He's doing better than in every way. He will start. And if you can get the Luke Ayling from Bielsa's promotion season, the best player in the champ, the best right back in the championship, he will start. That's obvious. However, will you get that Luke Ayling? I'd imagine not. He's a lot. Of, he's a much older player. We've seen a slight decline in the last few years. Thirty odd years old now. You know, it's time to bring through the young player who has all the potential and all the value and all the drive. But if and, and this is what I, if people start saying like, oh, Cody's not starting, it's not wrong. You should be playing him. Well, he's not. And the other the other managers didn't at the club. It's just the entire manager club clubs at the managers at the club. Jesus, have an agenda against him. If he doesn't play, it's because he's not performing good enough in training. It's it's quite simple. Bark will play the best fullback that he thinks will best suit his system. And if Cody's not playing, it's that's because he's not performing well. Simple as that. But what I will say is this. I believe in him. I think he will turn up to train. I think he's got a really good attitude. He wants to perform. He wants to start. He wants to be the main man. He comes to train. He performs well. Fak will play him. Fak will have to adapt him to his system because he's not the perfect in terms of defending and going forward. Progressive, progressive stats are not the best. But he's a solid, solid right back to having this league, having proven that at Luton. He's gone up with them. He played every game for them. He needs to keep growing and developing because there's a lot more to give from him and he's not the perfect article. But out of all these loan plays, for me, I think he's got the biggest chance of having the biggest impact on this side. So there's my thoughts. I don't have an agenda against one or the other. That's my collective thought. So yeah, that's all the loans. So yeah, that's all the loans. And, and next, next I'm going to do the youth players. Um, some of the 21s players that have been promoted to the first team. I'm going to go through them. But I'm going to do that after the Man United game because I want to see a little little taste from them first before I do that. Um, but yeah, let, what do you guys think? Um, it's always important to consider with all these players, a lot of it will depend on how they train. Right? Well, they don't train well, they won't play. We can also had a great season last year, but if not training well, he's not going to play. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. I appreciate the support. Sports always mental on this. Please keep it up because why not? Let's keep going, eh? But yeah, top, top legends, all of you.